Okay, so I just want to start out by saying that if you haven't seen any of 3 Blue 1 Brown's videos, uh, I highly recommend you check them out. They're some of the best and most intuitive um, math videos on YouTube, uh, and like I said, I highly recommend you go check them out. Uh, but that being said, in his videos he has a really cool way of demonstrating uh, linear transformations um, and demonstrating complex functions as transformations of the Cartesian plane, of the input plane where every point on the input plane moves to its corresponding point on the output plane. So uh, I went and kind of recreated um, those animations in Desmos, but the difference between this and his videos is that these are interactive, so you can put whatever functions in you want here and kind of play around with it, which is something I always wanted to do when I was watching his videos, so you can kind of follow along at home if you want. So it's not the easiest thing to use because you got to kind of understand how it works. So I'm just going to kind of briefly explain um, how this works. So the first thing you're going to want to do is find the function you want to graph. So I'm going to graph one that's come up in a lot of his videos. Um, and once you have that function, you're going to want to go to Wolfram Alpha and you're going to want to go ahead and put in that function. So I'm going to graph uh, e to the, or not e, uh, I'm going to graph a plus bi squared. So a plus b times i. This will be your input and whatever you want your function is. So this is just squared. So a plus bi squared. You're going to go ahead and hit enter on Wolfram Alpha. Okay, and it'll generate a lot of stuff for you because Wolfram Alpha is pretty great. But once the thing we're interested in is this, this alternate forms here. So we see we have an a squared with uh, no complex uh, or no imaginary constant. We have the 2a plus b with the imaginary constant. And then we have a negative b squared, which has no imaginary constant. So we want to first we want to take all the terms that don't have an i as a factor and an imaginary constant as a factor. And we want to go back and put those there. So the two were a squared and then negative b squared, and then we want to go back here, and the imaginary ones were 2ab. And so we're going to go back here and type in 2ab. Okay, nothing's going to happen yet, because this is the progress bar of the animation. So we can slide along here and kind of watch the points move along to their corresponding spots. Um, now it's really laggy, especially while I'm recording, um, but Desmos isn't really meant for doing this. And you're, you're telling the computer to do a lot of uh, computations at once. So if you kind of scrub along slowly, you can see what's happening here. Um, and so the main idea is just being able to play around with it. So it's not meant to make the most beautiful animations like you see in videos. Um, but um, I feel it is worth noting. Uh, here we go at the end in a second. There we go. And when it's all the way at 1, 100%, then this is the output plane. So this is where all the points map to on the output from the input plane. Uh, and I feel like it's worth noting that if you do want to generate a smooth animation, you can just take a bunch of pictures and just make a GIF out of them. And so they animate like this. So I use the program to do this. This is just ln of x, uh, or ln of a plus bi. So going from there, boom, to your output plane, and then back to your input plane. So you, you can just take a bunch of pictures and put them together in a GIF like that, or a GIF, if you will. And it makes it uh, so that if you ever want to look at the animation quickly, you can see it that way. But uh, this works kind of good enough for me when I just want to tinker with stuff. So, yep, to first to graph a function, you go to Wolfram Alpha, then you go back here, you put in the real and imaginary parts. And now there's a few other features uh, that I want to point out as well. So there's also a movable point. So this will take any point on the input space and map it to its point on the output space. So here we're inputting 2, 1, and the output is this red point, 3, 4. So we can see that this point moves over to that point. And so we can move this point around and see where what happens to it. So, you know, if we move along the real axis, we should only get a real thing out. Uh, we should be positive real on the output. If we move along the imaginary axis, we should be negative real on the output. And, you know, if we move along this way, we should, uh, at a 45, we should stay on the imaginary axis if we do it properly. Um, and, yeah, there should be negative imaginary axis. And, you know, you can kind of get an intuition for how the function kind of works. Uh, oh, and also one more thing is if this doesn't really make sense to you of how you get to this form from your function uh, or for different functions, uh, I encourage you to try and figure it out because it's pretty cool how to get to stuff like that. Um, so you can graph different functions uh, and there's different tricks for kind of simplifying it like so. But if you can't figure it out, you can just throw it in tool from alpha uh, to just graph stuff quickly. So there we go. That's how you can graph functions like Grant does in his videos. Uh, and then a few more things, the half grid lines here. 
which will just give more grid lines. Uh, and then if we want a faster animation, we could turn the grid lines off and on the um, approximation. So this gives faster animations. Uh, it won't lag as much, but it's also much lower detail, much lower quality. Um, so yeah, if you want the animation to go faster, you can use these. But uh, I, I don't think it's really worth it. So the grid lines work a lot better. Uh, and finally, if you want something that goes really fast, you can just show the points where they map. Um, and you can just kind of show the points moving to their corresponding points on the output space. Um, so if you wanted to say, see which point goes to 3, 4, you kind of go to 1 and kind of slowly follow them backwards and see if you're following along with me. It should have been this point here, 2, 1, which maps to 3, 4, as we saw with the movable point before as well. Uh, and so this works really well for visualizing complex functions or really any functions where you can have the outputs uh, have two parameters to the output from two parameters on the input, but you only want two dimensions on the output. Otherwise, you could do a parametric surface. You graph a parametric surface on something like calcplot, calcplot 3D. Uh, but this works really well for like Grant does in his videos. And then finally, um, the animation to get these points here, uh, you can theoretically move the points in any way you want. So this animation kind of scales the uh, scales the point. So the angle and the magnitude of the point kind of scale. Uh, at the same time to kind of arc the points to the corresponding spot when you animate them. But you could just move them directly. Uh, and this looks a lot better for linear transformations like he does in his linear algebra series. So if you have a linear transformation, uh, I recommend using the second sketch I threw together, which um, in red and or in blue and green, it highlights the um, uh, basis vectors. So you have your i hat and j hat, and you can see after the transformation what happens to those vectors as well as what happens to the entire plane. And like before, you have your half grid lines and stuff like that. And so this works a lot better for um, linear transformations. And so, in order to, uh, so this is really good for linear algebra. And if you want to quickly change something, then this would be the a coordinates. So if we want the i vector or the blue vector to map to the coordinate 1, 1, then this would be 1, 1. And if we want b to map to 2, negative 2, then the green one should map to 2, negative 2. And we can go ahead and apply the transformation. Uh, and what we see is that the blue one maps to 1, 1, because we have the 1 and the 1 here. And then the green one maps to 2, negative 2, 2, negative 2, as we see there. And, and so same as if you had a matrix, these would be your uh, columns and rows in the matrix. So it's kind of the same idea, just it's a different animation to move the points. Uh, and this one looks a little better for linear transformations. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys. And thanks for watching. Also, sorry about the uh, audio quality and lag in the video. Uh, my computer wasn't lagging this badly when I filmed it, but apparently the screen recorder I used uh, wasn't the best. It was my first time recording on this laptop. So yeah, sorry about all that. But um, Hopefully you guys still enjoyed, and hopefully you guys get some good use out of these Desmos sketches. Uh, and once again, thanks for watching.